Yeah, Cambridge was very different. Um, uh, London, England in, in the early 70s was uh, still struggling with an influx of people from uh, the colonies who, who had the right as, as passport holders of Commonwealth um, to be able to live and f uh, travel freely in England. So a lot of Indians did travel to study in England and um, there was far more discrimination there uh, it was pretty overt, and uh, I didn't like it. I think it's very different now. Uh, I've certainly traveled back to England and London since then, and I don't feel the same way. But as a young person, I was think I was a little over 15. Um, that wasn't something that was very comfortable for me at all. My parents had planned for me to go to school there for my undergraduate and possibly graduate work, and they'd found a family for me to live with. Um, but I just didn't didn't fit in. I didn't feel like I didn't fit in. It's interesting going back to India. Um, I didn't go back for several years and uh, I had very little communication by voice. I, I remember talking to my family once a year for about three or four minutes only. So when I finally went back, um, it was a tremendous culture shock. I was still a young student uh, at Michigan. I dressed probably closer to being looking like a hippie. I had long hair, I had an afro. Uh, wore jeans, t-shirt, and that was not acceptable when I when I went back to India. So I looked very different. And uh, I didn't speak with the same accent any longer, so people could identify and look at me a certain way and then listen to my voice and say, ah, he's not from here anymore. So that was strange. So you're right, there's the concept of you don't belong anywhere at that point, and it's, it's a hard adjustment to make. But there was also a change um, when I became a father, and my daughter, I'm married to a Caucasian, and my daughter, um, you know, is very exotic looking. She doesn't, she's beautiful, and she doesn't look a lot like me. So when we would travel together, people would always look at her and wonder whether is she his child bride, or is she, you know, uh, a family member, or, you know, what is the relationship? And it used to bother her a lot. Uh, she's an adult now, and so that, that's different. But you do experience that um, where you wonder if you belong anywhere. Yeah, my education and my professional life has been um, pretty much a sea of constant change. I started out as an engineer because that was my way out of India. So uh, it was the only way my parents uh, felt they would fund me. So. Um, it wasn't something that was of, of great passion to me. I, I struggled through engineering school, and I actually got a master's too in engineering because uh, in India, having a bachelor's is not considered being educated, so. Um, but when I started working, I enjoyed, um, I worked as a manufacturing engineer for General Electric, and I really enjoyed problem solving. And uh, I realized that, um, you know, there was a connection between problem solving being out in engineering and problem solving uh, in law. I always had an interest in law because maybe I like to argue, I'm not sure. But uh, it got to a point where I was working at GE and I was in charge of warranties, which uh, allowed me to work very closely with the legal department. And I enjoyed that and I enjoyed uh, learning uh, both the uh, engineering aspect as well as the legal aspects of managing warranty claims. So I walked into our general counsel's office and said, hey, I'd like to be a lawyer. And interestingly enough, he said, oh, engineers make terrible lawyers, don't do this. And I was kind of discouraged. I went back and then I researched his career. And it turns out he was a engineer from Marquette University in electrical engineering. So I stormed back in and I said, hey, wait a minute. And he said, you're a really good engineer. Why would you want to be a lawyer? <laughs> so I ended up um, going to law school. General Electric uh, was kind enough to leave me on a leave of absence all through law school. And when I graduated, um, I got a chance to work at Quarles and Brady that did a lot of work for um, General Electric. So it kind of went a full circle and I found that um, solving problems, problems don't show up in a particular way. Um, they don't show up as legal problems or technical problems. Um, more often than not, they're people problems. So if you, the more you know and the, the more you're able to actually identify where the root, of, root cause is, um, you're better off uh, having a diversified background. So that's how I ended up in law.